The desire for greatness is shared by most of humanity. But as much as we can all be great in our own ways, not all stars will shine the same. Jack Nicholas is one of those exceptional stars that have shown brightest, and his story will be told through generations. So how did a boy once diagnosed with polio become the golden bear? How did he get into golf in the first place? What's the legacy of Jack Nicholas? Ask around. Ask even those who know Jack but don't know Jack about golf. They would likely have very identical answers. They would say Jack is one of the sweetest human beings ever. That's not yellow, that's vanilla. He set the bar very high for golf ambassadorship, carrying golf in a gentle smile and an exemplary character. And you know how bears just have big hearts. Talking about the golden bear and his big heart, Jack started the Nicholas Children's Healthcare Foundation in 2004, and it had been a long time coming. Even at the peak of his career, Jack played mainly for two things, the fans and charity. His philanthropy was greatly inspired by two dear friends. One was Bob Hope, his mentor in many ways, and his soulmate, Barbara Nicholas. Nicholas had always been involved with charity. He participated in the first ever American Cancer Society's 19th Hole Club, which celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2018. Also, his memorial tournament has raised millions for charity since its inception, but his inclination to benevolence took on a greater purpose in 1970. Craig Smith was the son of the minister at the church Barbara attended. The young man and Jack had bonded over their love for golf before Craig began battling a rare bone cancer. So in his honor, the Golden Bear wore his iconic yellow shirt on the final day of major tournaments. It was his way of saying hello to Craig through the TV screen. His little friend saw him clutch his first claret jug in yellow in 1970. And he also donned Craig's favorite color when he lifted the 1971 PGA Championship. Sadly, the young man lost the fight against the virulent Ewing sarcoma in June 1971. Another reason children's healthcare was so close to Jack's heart was one personal tragedy that was averted in 1966. Nan, his only daughter, had suddenly developed some type of pneumonia. Fortunately, the doctors found out it was caused by the crayon she had swallowed, and the little girl was saved. She grew up to be the mother of Nick O'Leary, the American football player and former Buffalo Bills tight end. As if these motivations were not enough, in 2005, a heartbreaking event cut through the Nicholas household like a rapier. Jack lost his 17-month-old grandson to a hot tub drowning incident. Besides his other charitable works, Jack's foundation has raised over $100 million for children's hospitals around America, including the Nicholas Children's Hospital in Miami. For all the good he has done, it's easy to see why people say Jack is a good guy. And similar to this other Jack, <laughs> Jack Nicholas was scary good. For years, he shaped shots like this one. There's nothing to see here, just Jack giving Johnny Miller an unforgettable putting lesson on the Champions Tour. That's not very intriguing if you consider how much Jack knows golf courses. You could say he knows them like the back of his hand, if he designed the back of his hand. But for all we know, that hand could have been a product of robotics. Jack joined forces with Pete Dye to create Harbor Town Golf Links in 1969, and the success of that venture spurred a new passion for him. He got into the business of sculpting acres of land into the most exquisite golf shrines around the world. His genius in this art has even been celebrated with the prestigious Golf World's Golf Course Architect of the Year in 1993. Of his over 300 personal designs, Muirfield Village, his first solo project located at home in Dublin, Ohio, remains his most popular. It has been the host of the PGA Tour's Memorial Tournament since 1976. Coincidentally, the 1984 Memorial Tournament would be his last non-major victory. Had to use the home advantage, you know? You know who also called Muirfield Village home? This guy. Tiger Woods would win the Memorial five times, including the 2012 edition, which was his 73rd PGA Tour victory. That win tied him for second most PGA Tour wins with Jack Nicklaus, who was there to congratulate him. Oh, how about that, huh? That's pretty good. Thanks, Jack. That's fun. Appreciate it. Thank, you. It. Thank you, bud. While Muirfield Village has been one of golf's most important grounds since its creation, it's arguably not Jack's magnum opus. It's hard to pick one from the beautiful bunch, ranging as far as the picturesque Le Robinia golf course in Italy to the lush Punta Espada golf club in the Dominican Republic. Have you ever played on a Jack Nicklaus designed golf course? Tell us in the comments. 
Do you know how Jack Nicholas invented the idiom Jack of all trades? By doing everything. You can thank us later, or you know what, don't mention it. Apart from creating golf courses, Jack has touched more businesses than a calisthenics bar in New York City has seen hands. Yeah, told you not to leave your hand sanitizer at home. He has written and co-written over 15 books, including Golf My Way. The quintessential golf manual has sold over 2 million copies and inspired millions more. In addition to his educational books, Jack has also released instructional videos for anyone interested in hitting it like the Golden Bear. You can bet that's a titanic load of golf fanatics. So remember when we told you Jack was one of the sweetest human beings ever? We meant that literally because Jack has his own brand of ice cream with the Schwanz Food Company. The Golden Bear scoops introduced in 2015 come in several original flavors and the packaging boldly has his face and name on it. Jack has had so much success off the course, but none compares to the blessing of a beautiful family. In the first week of their freshman year at Ohio State University, Jack met Barbara Bash. She had come over to say hello to Mary, her friend and Jack's girlfriend at the time. Later, Jack walked Barbara back to the bacteriology lab where she worked. He got her phone number and called her that night. And when Mary left Jack, her departure opened the gates of romance for him and Barbara. It's not surprising that one of Jack's favorite pastimes is fishing. There are lots of fish in the sea, and this bear sure knew how to get himself the best one. A very long story short, the teenagers got engaged in 1959 and got married in 1960. After a brief honeymoon in New York City, they returned to Columbus, Ohio and had their first child in 1961. Jack had just returned from a tournament in Cincinnati when Jack Nicholas II was born. And when he saw his baby boy, he passed out. He would reprise his fainting act for three more childbirths, that of Stephen and Nan and Gary, when the smelling salt couldn't even save him. But for Michael Nicholas, his heart reportedly held up, maybe because he had more time to prepare for his final child's arrival. Among his five kids, only one took Jack's path. Gary Nicholas turned pro in 1991, but his career never picked up any real pace. His highest point was the three years he spent on the PGA Tour from 2000 to 2003. But it's okay, at least he has a father who won everything. It's hard to believe, but very true, that while Jack was busy conquering the world, he never spent two weeks away from his family. It feels like the real ingredient in his triumphant life was prioritizing what mattered most, and that's always the people we love. Golf may have given Jack 18 majors, but there are no greater gifts than the 22 grandkids he's had through his children. But how can we talk about Jack Nicholas without mentioning golf? After all, it's the real reason the world got to know him and the reason it will never forget him. Already married, Jack ditched a lifelong dream to take up his father's profession as a pharmacist and became a pro golfer in 1962. Golf wasn't lucrative yet, and the Saudis were nowhere near it. So he had to play tournament after tournament and travel from city to city. He went as far as Australia, where he won the Australian Open six times. His arch rival and pal, Gary Player, is the only one who has more, with seven victories on that faraway continent. Jack did everything to keep the checks coming in. He was also the best at his craft, so deservedly, he was the first pro golfer to break the two, three, four, and five million dollar earnings marks. Who else thinks Jack Nicholas should be an adjective synonymous with prolific? Don Lawrence might think so. Lawrence was the renowned Australian sports writer credited with naming Jack the Golden Bear. He said Jack looked like a big, cuddly golden bear. We don't know if Lawrence knew that the Golden Bear was also the mascot of Upper Arlington High School where Big Jack played basketball, baseball, and football. Being a golf multimillionaire was all right, but his tremendous run of victories was just astounding. He had already won the US Amateur twice, so he was poised to win some pro majors as well. The first of his 18 majors, a record that has stood unbroken forever, came in Oakmont in 1962. He won the playoff by three shots to beat Arnold Palmer in his home state of Pennsylvania. That win sparked a rivalry and friendship that lasted until Palmer passed away in 2016. By age 26, he had completed his first of three career Grand Slams, in a run that included the first successful defense of the Masters Tournament. Through the 1960s, he won seven majors and 30 PGA Tour titles, and followed it with eight majors and 38 PGA Tour titles in the 70s. Imagine being Jack's contemporary. Yeah, must have been one heck of a headache-inducing sight on Sundays. Even at 46, he proved to be too much trouble as he won his sixth Masters and last Major. 
guess what color he was wearing on that day in 1986. He told Barbara that Sunday morning, I'm going to wear a yellow shirt today. I think Craig would like it. In 1990, he became eligible to play on the senior tour. And true to his nature, in his first start, he showed he was too good for the old game and won his first senior major title at the Tradition. He would go on to repeat what he did on the PGA Tour as he became the record major winner on the Champions Tour with eight majors out of 10 total wins. As for his time with Team USA, he won the Ryder Cup for six straight tournaments between 71 and 81. His Ryder Cup record stands at 17 wins, eight draws, and three losses. As captain of the team, he won the Ryder Cup at PGA National in 1983, but lost in 1987 when the tournament was brought to his place at Muirfield Village. His time as the captain of the President's Cup team also produced two victories, one draw, and one loss. Jack has been a member of the World Golf Hall of Fame since 1974. Well, that might need a rechristening if the guy that made golf famous is somehow missing from it. Back at home in Ohio, the Jack Nicklaus Museum was opened in 2002 on the Ohio State University campus. But that wasn't all. In 2006, he dotted the I during the Ohio State Marching Band signature maneuver. Believe us when we tell you that's a huge deal over there. Fact or fiction? That's usually the question when you tell anyone that a golfer has had his face on actual money. As a matter of fact, the Royal Bank of Scotland issued 2 million British five-pound notes to commemorate Jack's final appearance at the Open in 2005. And if you'd like to collect the out-of-circulation notes, you might have to head to eBay to get one from resellers. The Jack Nicklaus Award has been given to the best collegiate golfer since 1988. Interestingly, it is also the name of the award presented to the PGA Tours Player of the Year. If you enjoyed this video about the legacy of Jack Nicklaus, Check out the video on the screen now, or the one we posted below. We're sure you'll like that one too. See you there!